Honorable Speakers, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Leader of Opposition, Honorable Members of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, it is an honor to stand before you today in this august house and deliver my maiden speech. Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank our President, His Excellency Georgi Kondrothi, for his most gracious speech. His Excellency has rightfully set a platform for us to govern our beloved nation for the next four years. Mr. Speaker, I wish to congratulate you on your reappointment as Speaker. You have served this August House well since 2014, and there is no doubt that you would continue to doing that. Madam Speaker, your humbleness doesn't allow you to understand that you are indeed a role model of women in our country to succeed and excel and to provide leadership. I want to thank you for that, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, may I also congratulate and thank our Prime Minister, Honorable Jose Avoninga Bani Marama, as under his leadership, we as a nation have achieved unprecedented social and economic prosperity in the last decade. Despite, despite the other members on the other side not willing to accept that fact. Mr. Speaker, not many appreciate how much sacrifice one has to make to take a public office, and that too, the office of the Prime Minister. With the rising levels of expectation from the public our Honourable Prime Minister is just a call away from the rank and file, the ordinary Fijians. Never in the history of this country we had such an action-oriented, accessible Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those of us who are heading, heading the various ministries know very well how seriously he takes his responsibility to the people of Fiji. Mr. Speaker, whenever an issue, request or complaint is raised with the Honourable Prime Minister, he immediately forwards it to the responsible minister for us to address the matter, close it off, and inform him. Until such time the matter is closed satisfactorily to all parties, it is on his list, and he will check on it. He doesn't forget, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Honorable Prime Minister has led us with dedication. The Honorable Prime Minister has led us with dedication and commitment and we should applaud his leadership and vision for our nation. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, this country at this point in time has no substitute for him. Madam Speaker, there is no match for him. The people of this country will not settle for anyone other than him, and his record of achievement speaks volumes on this. Yeah. Madam Speaker, Having been through two elections, I'm quite certain to know how the opposition has been trying to undo all the good work that we have done to remove racialized policy, politics in this country and take the country forward. Madam Speaker, it saddens me to know that while we are blessed with diversity, the opposition, instead of harnessing from the richness of this diversity in ethnicity, culture, and religion, they have used it as a tool to divide the nation and take us back to days where ethnic supremacy was the, the, the order of the day. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the opposition that while they are doing this in pursuit of the short-term goal of getting into government, they are doing a great disservice to future Fiji because when their children and grandchildren grow up and read about Fiji's history, they will be very saddened because they will want a Fiji which embraces all and not just one ethnic group or one religion. Mr. Speaker, I sincerely hope that the opposition understands that it is not simply a bounteous land that makes a nation, but a common thread of diverse culture, religion, and identity that unites its people. A great nation can only be a consequence of the people it comprises of. Madam Speaker, the persistence of racism, racial profiling, remains a serious challenge to our hope to thrive as a nation of principles of fairness, equality, and liberty. Madam Speaker, dangerous cocktail of willful ignorance, racism, and bigotry spewed during election campaign reminders 
that hatred and animosity still fester, and there are some elements in our society who are willing to consciously impact the tenuous and fragile nature of racial harmony in the name of positive discrimination, consciously using their stature and position to poison the minds of our youth, risking incitement of more serious kind of hatred and intolerance among such regions. Often shielded by ethno-nationalistic rhetoric to try to divide us, their views are fundamentally anti-democratic, true patriots embrace fairness, equality and liberty, and respect fellow citizens. Madam Speaker, while social media platforms have become an increasingly ambiguous presence in people's lives across the globe, hate speech, racism, fake news, and various forms of bigotry have risen to the unpatriotic activities of keyboard warriors. Madam Speaker, social media has been ungraciously misused by some to spew hate speech, racial tensions, discrimination, racial profiling, hiding behind, hiding behind fake IDs, often, most often on foreign land. These perpetrators sell intolerance and bigotry covered with fabric of patriotism. Madam Speaker, hate speech is dangerous because words have power and can influence others to act. Hate tears society along racial, ethnic, and gender and religious lines. Madam Speaker, it is time now that we pledge that we won't let self-political gains and nationalistic ideologies divide us. We all, we all the elected members of this august house should ensure that our supporters do not demean others on the basis of race, ethnicity, gender, religion, age, and disability. Madam Speaker, we have come a long way to let us ungodly thoughts undermine our dream for our nation's future, that is peace, prosperity, stability, and equality. We must heal the divisions caused by intolerance and bigotry. It's a challenge to members from the other side, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to mend all this, we need to do something. First and foremost, we need to act. In the face of hatred and racial discrimination, apathy will be interpreted as acceptance by perpetrators. We must take action. If we don't, hate and discrimination will persist. Madam Speaker, I urge all fellow Fijians to reject leaders that show bias and fail to act on such issues. Look inside yourself for biases and stereotypes. We all grow up with prejudices and fear. Madam Speaker, I still believe the best days are ahead and that our commonalities will prevail over our differences. Madam Speaker, I would like to quote Ban Ki-moon, the eighth Secretary General of the United Nations, and I quote, defeating racism, tribalism, intolerance, and all forms of discrimination will liberate us all, victim and perpetrators alike, unquote. Let's practice motivation and love and not discrimination and hate. Madam Speaker, I wish to ask the leaders on the other side not to remain silent when their neighbors, friends, or fellow colleagues is making racial or hate comments. Stop them and have a word with them. If you're quiet, thinking that it doesn't affect you, then think twice that someday it might affect you. In 1987, when Honorable Mbuka um, uh, carried out the coup, the majority of the e talkers were applauding and cheering in support of the coup. In 2006, when Honorable PM took over the reins of the government to put an end to discrimination and bring prosperity to our nation, the same people, the same people, the same people turned around saying, the same people turned around saying, the same people, the same people turn around saying, oh, it's bad. But in 87, they were cheering, they were enjoying. And now they turn around saying, oh, this is bad. Government should not be taken over. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, let me now, let me further reinforce this by quoting the famous poem by German pastor Martin Nimula. And I quote, first they came for the socialist, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unions. I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then, then they came for the Jews. I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then, then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me." And quote. But Madam Speaker, not all is lost. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all Fijians who chose truth over lies, prosperity over failure, impartiality over discrimination, stability over chaos, and equality over inequality. Madam Speaker, let me assure to those who chose otherwise, who are here to save all, to provide service without discrimination. Madam Speaker, 
I would like to reiterate that we on this side of the August House are guided by principles of fairness, equality, and our commitment to the well-being of all Fijians. I stand humble, Madam Speaker, I stand humbled in this August House, ready to serve my fellow Fijians. Together we can move Fiji forward. I take on this task with humility, and but also with determination, with the awareness of my limits, but also with passion. Madam Speaker, agriculture has always been an integral part for most Fijians, including me. I grew up on a farm, realizing benefits derived from hard work, perseverance, and being resilient. Resilient to drought, resilient to floods, resilient to market. When I speak, I still recall those days when we used to return home from school at 4.30 p.m., change, have a bowl of tea, and go to the farm and walk till the sun sets. We were mindful that our work on the farm will bring food on table, how we had to grow cash crops, sell in any market on Saturdays so that we could pay our school fees, pay for textbooks and bus fare. Those kids who were children of unskilled laborers not having land, succumb to their destiny, and thus poverty and hardship continues generation across generation. Mr. Speaker, growing up toiling the soil gives a strong attention to the country, and it is integral to what I am today. Those who may be dismissive of this statement as per se could possibly not have had the seminal experience of life on farms. Mr. Speaker, I thank my predecessor, Honorable Inya Sinuratu, for a job well done during his tenure at the ministry, and I assure this house that I would carry on from there on. Madam Speaker, I've always regarded agriculture as a noble profession. It feeds people, provides basic necessities. Agriculture is not the beneficiary of the exploitation of people's weakness. It is crucial for people's sustenance. Madam Speaker, I'm honored to stand here as Minister of Agriculture, Rural and Maritime Development, and Water Waste and Environment. I sincerely appreciate the confidence bestowed upon me to lead these ministries, agriculture, rural, and maritime development, water and environment are intrinsically, are intrinsically linked, and it is essential we realize the synergies between these sectors. Madam, speakers, Madam Speaker, given uncertainties in future climate, it is essential that we move towards developing modern solutions for farming that incorporates climate change. We need to modernize our agriculture sector, new technology, mechanization, and better production to meet growing demand for quality food and to improve the nation's foreign trade balance and ensure food security for the whole population. Madam Speaker, in doing so, we need to start identifying partners with whom we can work to deliver. Madam Speaker, a key thematic area that the Ministry will focus on is improving the delivery of agriculture extension services to our farmers. Moreover, the Ministry under the 2018-19 budget will focus on the review of this current organizational structure as one of its key activities. Madam Speaker, issues pertaining to agriculture cannot be addressed in isolation. There is a need to collaborate to further develop the agriculture sector in Fiji. We need further research and development on agronomy, horticulture, soil science, livestock production, veterinary science, plant pathology, and value addition in all essentially aimed at climate-proofing our agriculture sector. Madam Speaker, we have in fact, on Monday, started discussions with Fiji National University with its academic expertise. FNU is the best place institution to provide technical support, much needed ideas, and also partner to undertake research with our staff, Madam Speaker. There are a volume of experts, Madam Speaker, professors and researchers at FNU, whom we are now wanting to further strengthen the relationship that was built by my predecessor. Madam Speaker, improving agriculture means that we directly support our farmers, our households and communities. We will continue to support our growth processes and exporters as they value add to our products and expand exports opportunities. Madam Speaker, one of our top priorities will be to continue facilitating the availability of more land for productive use. As we all know, that land is an important prerequisite for socioeconomic development. Intimately linked to this is a sustainable utilization of land which balances production with production that safeguards the rights of landowners for future generation. This requires a sound land use framework which will promote the proper and sustainable use of land and one that supports agriculture production in the immediate and in the long term. Madam Speaker, land in economics is classified as natural capital. Unless it is pushed to put to positive use and generates positive returns, it is termed as dead capital. Madam Speaker, 
Ministry of Agriculture will continue to provide the required leverage to farmers via the farm support programs so that not only existing farmers are given space to grow, but we also attract new young and farmers with a corporate image. And speaker, we will ensure that we achieve the policy and strategies outlined in the documents like the 5 and 20 year development plan. Madam Speaker, it is essential that our farmers get a better return back to the farm gate. This is crucial and ensures sustainability of the farms. And getting a better return at farm gate means securing the future for Fijian farms in a global marketplace. Madam Speaker, for me, the Fijian farming and the return that they get drives me and it gives me the purpose of my job. During my, during my last meeting with the Mr. Agriculture staff yesterday, Madam Speaker, I emphasized to them about the need to put farmers first. That will now be our motto, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, more details of future activities will be fleshed out later on, Madam Speaker, during ministerial statements. Madam Speaker, the rural and maritime areas in Fiji constitute about 94% of its complete land mass. 44.1% of the total Fijian population reside in the rural areas and more often depend on agriculture to support their livelihoods. The government has prioritized rural development with improvements in the infrastructure and provision of adequate public utilities. Madam Speaker, we are now working very closely with the Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development and, which, and, and I promise Madam Speaker, a lot of work will be done in this, in this area of interior and maritime development, Madam Speaker. I just, we just came out of a meeting at one o'clock, meeting all the DOs and Commissioner Easton uh, at the Ministry's office, uh, giving out the agenda from now and what we're going to do and how we're going to uh, gallop with the work that we need to do, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, water is an environment of cultural and spiritual value for many people in Fiji. Important customs and spiritual beliefs of the Fijian community are embedded in our water and environment. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, water and environment are linked to important sources of food, recreation, and income, and as such, are an integral way for our life. Madam Speaker, as such, it is timely that we consolidate efforts to safeguard our environment and waterways. Madam Speaker, given such importance of this ministry, instead of applauding and thanking the government for establishing a dedicated ministry for waterways and environment, some people made fun of it, saying it's a ministry of waste, ministry of sewerage, etc. Madam Speaker, that's how short-sighted some people are, Madam Speaker. They have no vision, Madam Speaker. They don't have no vision. No vision, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as I've always said, we are about the future. We are, we are about the future. That's why I with that one MP there, Madam Speaker. We look at the future. The formulation of Ministry of Waterways and Environment reflects government's vision to man manage our water resources, protect our communities and households and villages, Madam Speaker, and safeguard our environment through integrated pragmatic approach, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Ministry will soon start developing the national waterways policy to address the bigger issues and challenges facing uh, at our catch match, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in concluding this speech, I wish to thank my fellow Fijians for the trust they place in me. Many people have worked tirelessly to get me here. I appreciate the effort, support, and effort. Madam Speaker, I was startled and humbled by the support I received along the way. I appreciate and thank them all, and I promise to honor their efforts, Madam Speaker. To my family, thank you. Thank you for being there for, through. Without your love and support, I would not have taken this journey. Madam Speaker, while I have thanked our Honorable Prime Minister for his leadership of the party, I will remiss if I don't acknowledge the great work done by our Party General Secretary, Honorable Sayyid Kayyum, in getting the Fiji First team, team this far. It's a team, Madam Speaker. He has sacrificed his personal family time and help for the nation building, Madam Speaker. While some on the other side, blind, some on the other side, blinded by religious curtains, don't acknowledge his contribution now, maybe after 20 or 30 years down the line, they will cherish his contribution for building a safer, peaceful, better, and modern Fiji. That's the time, when I'm, that's the time, Madam Speaker, the children and grandchildren will say, Papa, it's amazing. We are like Australia and New Zealand and America. Madam Speaker, I also want to acknowledge, I also want to acknowledge, I also want to acknowledge the great work done by a youth leader, Ms. Nazia Ali. She held the fort during one of the most crucial times for all of us. At one point in time, we were all waiting for the beep sound of the viral message from her, giving us the latest updates. Thank you, Nazia. You're a great person, a great team player. We miss you a lot in Parliament. Madam Speaker, our office staff, Ben, Whitney, Damien, and the fleet of volunteers who work tirelessly behind the scenes, ensuring that we get to the people useful information. Thank you. Madam Speaker, 
I commit myself to represent all Fijians to contribute to the well-being and growth of this nation. When I speak on Tuesday, on Tuesday, Honorable Tui Sabah approached me to discuss about some assistance to farmers in his area. I saw some degree of hesitation in him discussing that with me. I tapped him on his shoulder and said, this government is for all. Don't hesitate to talk to me, unquote. I urge members of this August House to come forward and discuss with us their issues and together we can improve. But don't goose step. Don't boost step and come to this parliament in front of the camera by big statement. Thank you, honorable member. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you.